This video covers iFilter, the new filter synthesis tool from AWR. iFilter runs as a wizard, so it's available on the project tree under Wizards iFilter. The main window contains the graph showing the response for the currently defined filter as defined in the data entry area on the left. These buttons control the responses shown in the graph by default it's insertion loss and return loss. Other options include phase, phase variation, group delay, and VSWR. Top level graph settings are covered in the settings button on top as shown here. The data entry can accept numbers typed directly into the boxes or the up down arrows can be used to scroll these values up and down. The bottom area of the window shows the schematic for lumped element filters and other options include layout when the selected filter type is distributed. Available filter types are covered in these top two buttons. So here we have the option to select lumped and when iFilter 300 is released the distributed options will be activated as well. Along the top low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop and the lower area covers options depending on what's selected in the upper area. So for example we can scroll through these and you get a feeling for what types of filters are available. For now we'll work with a lumped element filter and as you can see on the left we're centered at 2200 megahertz, a fifth order filter, 0.1 dB ripple and a 220 megahertz bandwidth into 50 ohm source and load terminations. We're using the ideal setting for now, so the lumped elements all have infinite Q, and as you can see, we have a fairly textbook perfect filter response here. The next step in getting towards a real filter can be achieved by selecting lossy components. Lossy components use the Q settings specified alongside here, and you can see the degradation in the filter response when the Q is considered for those elements. The final step in making a synthesized filter real would be to realize the filter with actual commercial components. Before we select the real option, let's take a look at the design options and get a feeling for what sort of components are available. If we select inductor vendors, you'll see a wide range of vendors and we also have the ability to uh, select our parts based on size. So if we wanted to use nothing bigger than an 0402 component, we could deselect all the others and proceed from there. By the same token, we have a rich set of capacitor vendors and their associated parts as well. So what happens when we select a real filter? Well, in this case, the result is not too good. As you can see, any semblance of a filter is lost based on selecting the nearest real component values to these synthesized values. So our options are to go into the filter options and let's try a different topology. Well, we can see here this is not going to solve our problem. This is not going to solve our problem. So let's try capacitively coupled. And here you can see that even using standard component values, the overall response of our filter is maintained. And we could use this as the basis for actual production. The final step in synthesizing our filter is going to be to generate the design in Microwave Office and do our final tuning and optimization there. So in order to easily export everything we have set up here, let's go into the graph settings, optimization goals, and we'll automatically add goals for both S21 and S11 as shown here in the graph. These goals have the same look and feel as optimization goals in Microwave Office. With this done, we can click on Generate Design we want to set the optimization goals. 
we want to let's say have insertion loss and return loss and we'll also look at a group delay plot so click OK and as you can see the schematic is generated the variables are all set for tuning optimization and the requested graphs are also added so with this as a starting point in microwave office we can now get our filter the rest of the way to where it needs to be and send the final design off to production.